What is going on everyone, it's Justin here and today I've got a video showing you some tech products anywhere from the price point of $10 to maybe $50 or $60 but I tried to keep as many of the things in the budget price category. I usually don't do these videos until like the back to school time or when it comes to the holiday season but I thought I would try out a ton of items and a lot of which didn't actually make the cut for this video. I want to make sure they were good. If you'd like to win a few of them, make sure you subscribe to the channel, leave a like on this video and also leave a comment down below and follow me over on Instagram and check out my podcast. And when this video hits 2000 likes, I'll be picking a winner in the comment section below. So as you can probably tell, there's a huge variety. You have like a great deal on an electric toothbrush, a router that I've used in the past, some small tripod, microphone if you want to start your own podcast. But without further ado, all the items are going to be linked down below and let's just go ahead and get started with the first one. So the first item we have right here is from Joby and it comes in at a price of just around $20. And whether you're like a filmmaker, you want to use your phone to record some photos and videos, time lapses, or you want to put a camera on it that might weigh a little bit more like this one, a point and shoot, then for $10, this is like the perfect accessory. And as you can see, it can hold the weight of it. This one right here is from Joby. And if you want to be able to clamp it to any items, say it's like a railing outside and anything you want, then you can definitely do that. And as you can see, it also has a flexible ball head as well. It screws on very nicely. And if you want to add a phone mount you also have the choice to do that. Overall Joby makes some really good stuff. I have some of the larger ones that obviously go up in price if you're putting a heavier camera on it but as you guys can see here you can either use it as a tripod, a clamp or if you really want to you can also use it for vlogging. So just hold it up like this and you're good to go. The Fuji X100V is like my new portable camera and instead of having to bring like a full-on tripod to keep the setup small this is like the perfect accessory that I found. So the next item that I have is a wireless router and this comes in at a price of $30. It's actually been around for quite a while, I believe like four to five years now, but as you can see, it is so tiny that you almost wouldn't believe that it is a full router that is built into this. It powers via micro USB, has one ethernet port, and it actually supports speeds up to 300 megabits per second. And the reason why I like something like this is not to use at home, but instead for travel. And if you're at like a hotel, they, they always make you pay for like Wi-Fi, the number of devices that you can have so if you can buy ethernet you can make your own network and just connect as many devices that you want to that and back when I went to film camp like in 2014 I remember bringing one of these and ended up charging for internet access so I actually made a profit off such a small item like this by creating my own network it is very simple to use and sets up just like any other router but just go ahead and plug it in and your network is ready to go and for 30 bucks you just can't go wrong especially by how small it is so the next thing is an accessory that comes in at under $10 and as you guys might know I love doing desk setup videos and this is like a great desk accessory. So they come in different designs, they range in price, but one example of this one right here that is at like kind of the entry starting point for price. But this one right here is like the cheapest one that I could find and it is actually a magnet to hold your cables. So say you have like a lightning cable, USB type C, and you just have to have the magnet rest right here and your cables won't like fall behind the desk or fall off your desk. And this one also has micro suction, so you can go ahead and attach it to your desk so it doesn't move and it also is easily removable if you have to. If you guys are looking to like clean up your desk setup and organize it a little bit but still have your cables very accessible, then this is one that I can really recommend. I also have a fabric one that comes in at just under $20, which is quite a bit more expensive, but I feel like that one looks much better. So next up, an item that I found is a laptop case and it comes in multiple sizes, but this one right here comes in at a price of $20. It has like a combination of leather and felt. And I think that is nice because if it was fully leather, it would feel very delicate, but the felt just protects and adds a little bit of padding. And one thing that I like about this one from Tom2 is that it actually has a wider cutout on one side so you can easily slide your laptop in and it is also suede protected on the interior. It uses magnets to kind of close and connect so you can quickly access everything. And on the back, you do also have a pouch for cables and maybe even an iPad. So if you have a lot of tech products sitting around the house like I do, or you travel quite often, then having a power brick like this is very handy, whether it is like in your living room to charge your devices or just to take with you. And this right here is one that I think is very stylish, which is always a bonus, even though it is just like a power attachment, but it has three ports right here, as well as three USB-A ports and one USB Type-C. So you can charge anything that you need, whether it is your phone or laptop. 
These USB Type-A ports have a 4.5 amp output and 3 amps on the USB Type-C, which isn't the fastest, but if you want to plug in like a full speed charger, then you can use the ports right here. But, and as someone who travels quite a bit and has multiple devices and cameras and everything to charge, this is something that I'm going to bring everywhere. The next item that I have is a webcam, and this is a Logitech C615. And right now it might be a bit hard to find it with everyone switching over to Zoom, but on a regular basis, the price in my opinion is pretty reasonable, especially if you don't need to buy like the top end C920, the Logitech Brio, because those can cost like hundreds of dollars in some cases, or over a hundred dollars, and the quality is honestly not that good from my experience. This right here will get the job done and it is a huge improvement from your built-in 720p webcam. It is full HD and 8 megapixels and you just need to plug and play. And as you guys can see, it is very portable and you can position the angle in anywhere that you would like. It does also have a microphone built in with echo free audio, but for example, if you're using this with like a newer MacBook, the MacBook does sound better. So next up is an item that is like a household one that everybody needs, but you might not want to pay a premium for, and that is an electric toothbrush. There's a lot of big brands out there, some that I've used as well, that make great electric toothbrushes, but they are like one to $200, and you have to add like the brush heads, they only include a couple. But this right here is an Atmoco, and it comes in at a price of $25, and also includes six brush tips, which alone usually costs more than $25 if you're going for a name brand. There is actually five different modes, including clean, soft, whiten, massage, and polish. And one feature that I like about it that is a bit different from the others is that it has a separate button just for the mode. So if you wanna turn it on and off, you don't have to like have to shuffle through all of these to get through it. So it is very easy to use. It also has the 30 second interval timer that is built in. And although it is not as powerful as some of the other toothbrushes that I've tried out, if you're looking for a good upgrade from just like a standard toothbrush, this is a really good deal. It also includes a charging base and a travel kit. So another desk accessory that I found is a Yoenik uh, headphone hanger, and this comes in at a price of just under $10. So one of the easiest ways to improve your desk and reduce the clutter is to have a headphone hanger just to hang it on the side. And this one right here has a nice pad to cushion it. It is made out of metal, feels very premium, but you also have a few different ways you can mount it. If you want to stick it on, you can use a 3M. It holds up to 10 pounds. But personally, I have never liked adhesives, so I like to just use screws and the holes are all pre-drilled. Comes in matte black, also comes in silver, but when you're not using it, just flip it over. It holds nicely and there you have it. So for 10 bucks, if you want to improve your desk a lot, then go ahead and buy one of these. So now that you have your headphones hanged, another way to kind of increase the surface area of your desk if you have a laptop is to get a vertical stand. So instead of having it lay flat, you can have it on the edge. And this right here is a stand that comes in at a price of $19. As you guys might have seen in previous videos, I've shown the one from 12 South, but that one is about $60. So for $19, you can just put this on your desk. If you have like a newer computer that has Thunderbolt, then you can just have one cable come out of it. And other than that, it just sits on the edge. Another very important accessory that I can recommend that isn't really considered tech, but for any tech lover, it's gonna be extremely helpful is the iFixit Basic Toolkit. And if you're someone like myself who occasionally has to take tech apart and you just can't find the right screw, you might accidentally strip it then this is a must have and it has all the fundamentals, whether it is the Torx and even the pentalobe. So you guys might not know this, but quite a few years ago, one way that I made money on the side, and I believe I made up to like $4,000 in a month, was from buying broken iPhones and fixing them myself before reselling them. And I pretty much did that with all the tools that came in this type of kit. It was a suction piece, a pry tool, the guitar pick like things, the screwdrivers, and that was all I needed. So if you wanna do like a side hustle during the summer, if there's no Apple store nearby, then this is like a kit that any tech user can't go wrong with. If you guys are looking to start a podcast, the Blue Snowball has been around for quite a while, and although the sound quality isn't gonna be the best on the market, if you can find it used for a good price, it can be a big improvement from the computer. And as someone who recently started a podcast, the equipment cost was very high, and this is like essentially all you need to start talking to guests or just to the internet. So this right here is the Snowball Ice, and you just plug it in via USB. You don't have to have any secondary preamps or boosters. Just plug it in your computer, set it up, and you're good to go. And as I said, I found this used, and I think I paid about $50. The fact that it is stylish and has to live on your desk is also a huge plus, and it comes in many different colors. So this is just a test of the Blue Snowball microphone, and I would say for the price, if you can find it used, it is a relatively good deal. And if you're doing like a podcast, a voiceover, or just conference calls, then as you can probably tell, the sound quality is pretty decent. The only thing that I would recommend that I don't have on here right now is a pop filter, because as you can probably tell, the plosives are pretty strong. 
The next piece is for your home and this comes at a price of just about $20 for two, which I think is a great deal. It's like 10 bucks each and that is a smart plug. So if you wanna be able to turn off a light or control something from your phone or via Wi-Fi, the options are limitless and just plug it in your wall, set it up with the app and it actually also works with Google Assistant and Amazon Alexa, which personally I don't really use but you also have the button, turn it on and off. And you can just have these like all over the house, wherever you need them. But I think for $20 for both of them, it is just a great deal for home tech. There's no hub required. You can also set schedules, use voice assistant, and there just isn't anything to really complain about for the price. With any smart home product though, the most important thing is whether or not it works. And a lot of times it relies on the app and with cheaper items, the app is kind of hit or miss. But with this one, it uses the TP-Link home app and the setup process was very painless. All I had to do was connect it to the network, link it with the app, and from there I was able to turn the power outlet on and off whether it was through the app or manually, and I found that it was very fast. Obviously this does depend on your Wi-Fi, but in my case I was maybe about 10 feet away from the router, so there wasn't any problems. So my overall impressions of this product is pretty good. Next up is a multicolor Wi-Fi bulb, and this right here is one that comes in at a price point of $25 for two. And it connects via Wi-Fi, doesn't need a hub, and it also has 16 different colors, so if you wanna set up like a cool mood, it's no Philips Hue in terms of its flexibility, but 1600 colors, I'm sure you're gonna find a couple that you're going to like. These only consume nine watts of power, and you can also use voice assistants such as Google Assistant and Amazon Alexa, just like the smart plugs that we just talked about. Even though I am a huge fan of Philips Hue, you do have to buy the hub, the kit, and like the individual bulbs that are like 50 to $60. So if you're just looking to get like a multicolored bulb, this is a way better deal. I was definitely a little bit skeptical about the app of this light bulb. It uses one called Smart Life, and it looks like it works with a ton of different products and is like kind of universally compatible, but the setup process was actually very easy and faster than some of the more expensive bulbs that I've tried out in the past. From there, you're able to change the colors and everything, and as you can see, even though the app is not the prettiest or most complex, it still has all the modes and custom options that you can set beyond the color. One of my must-have car accessories, though, is a clip for my phone, and personally, I like the kinds that mount into a vent. It is very minimal, and most cars have the vent position so that this can clip on, and with the dual mounting points, it is actually more sturdy than the one that I have in my car right now. All you have to do is just put your phone, it clamps in, nothing really much to say about it, but if you need to like see your maps and stuff, then this is like the one and all car accessory that I can recommend. So the next item is one that I picked up a while back and they started actually sponsoring the channel and that is a paper-like matte screen protector for the iPad. It is available for pretty much every iPad model and the reason why I like it a lot is because it actually adds functionality both in terms of blocking glare and making it a nicer writing experience on your tablet. Although it's definitely not the cheapest screen protector out there, it is very high quality and for iPad users who are very loyal and rely on it a ton, I found that it does make it easier to draw and write. Beyond that, if you want to take your tablet anywhere, then this will also offer protection for the large display. Another accessory that is also very popular, especially among females, is a pop socket. So just go ahead and stick to your phone. And if you want it to double as a stand for your phone while you're eating dinner, then this is going to be a solution to that instead of having to hold it the whole time. Another thing that is also very handy to have is a headphone splitter. And nowadays, most phones don't have headphone jacks. So this serves as an adapter and a splitter, and it has this nice braided quality to it for $9. This will just plug into any USB Type-C device. You have your 3.5. It is very self-explanatory, but if you just want to like throw this in your travel bag or cable bag, it can be a very handy tool when you need it. When I'm flying, I always use noise-canceling earbuds that are wired, so I always like to have something like this, especially as an iPad user or if you own an Android phone. On the home security side of things though, the best bang for buck is gonna be the WiseCam, a security camera that can live stream in 1080p that has motion and sound recording and free cloud storage. But if you want more cloud storage, you're gonna to have to pay for it. But just for the hardware itself of $25 being 1080p, I think most houses could utilize this, even if you live at school. The two-way voice control is also very handy, and although there are many more large platforms and more advanced systems out there, for 25 bucks, if you're just looking for like a starter system, it is a great deal. As someone who has a lot of battery packs, those are another type of product that range a lot in price, but one that I found on Amazon that has great reviews is a company called Miyati, and for a kit of two 10,000 milliamp hour batteries, which I feel like is like the perfect medium, it was $20 for two. 
is able to charge your phone through each output at up to five volts. And it also just comes in at a size of 14 millimeters thick and 218 grams. As someone who usually travels quite a bit, I just can't have enough of those around. It is just thin, take it around in your pocket. And if you're out for a long day or at a press event, then you're gonna need it. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching this video on budget tech that starts at under $10 and goes up to maybe around 50 here and there. But I tried to keep the price point of most of the items that I found at the lowest point and can benefit either desk setups or home. Like I mentioned, none of the products in this video are sponsored. I picked all of them by myself. And if you enjoyed it, make sure you drop a like and I'll see you all in the next video.